I think I may have found my new favorite AK, but you'll find out more in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. So I had a chance to use this gun, this guy right here, at High Ground Airsoft a few weeks ago and absolutely kind of fell in love with it. But is it perfect or did I just have love at first sight? Well, we're gonna go over into a full review and give it what it's really worth. And we're looking today at the GNG RK74 CQB. So infatuation aside, this is actually a pretty darn good tactical AK. Uh, we're gonna start externally and then I'm gonna move into the internals for you because it's kind of both that make everything work. And G&G's really pulled out the stops. They've actually made some improvements and modifications to this gun or to previous AKs to this one that I'm so glad they did. So starting with the front, on this version, you get this huge flash hider. It is actually a sound amplifier and just has this really satisfying crack it gives the shots. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the final release, so I'm hoping they keep this. Now, this one's metal. I'm hoping they just actually paint the tip or something and don't give us an orange one, but we'll find out more on that. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and just they can paint this thing permanent orange because this is pretty darn cool in and of itself, but it's not just that. So moving on the front, you get standard AK sights here. You get a little modified AK site here and a decent amount of rail space for an AK platform. A little bit of space here so if you run something forward, uh, you can or you can't. You have plenty of good clearance here to still use the iron sights. In fact, more than you get with a normal AK, but then you get a ton of rail space here in the back. What's also cool is it's all part of the dust cover. So even the cover hinges up, it doesn't come off. You don't have to lose the dust cover. If you guys have ever owned an AK, you gotta like get it lined up in the slots and do the magic dance and all that. And it's so hard to get back on. I love that they did that. So again, check one for uh, G&G doing some neat stuff with their AK, but it doesn't just end there. Finishing up with this front, because we did jump to the back there, you get four slots of key mod down each side, which kind of gives it a really cool tactical look. So you guys can add a key mod rail section to either side if you want to have something like a light, a laser, a camera, something that won't fit here on the top. You want to run off here to the side, but they do give you Picatinny rails on the bottom on the front. So you can just slap a little stubby foregrip on here and you're good to go. Uh, keep in mind though, because this is AK, you got a way you do the mag loads, don't go with the long one. It will impede you from actually doing those mag changes. So uh, definitely wanna stick with the short stubbies or like an angled foregrip or something like that to get it going. Personally, I didn't miss it when I played. I played some really tight CQB and I was just fine using this. They did a great job with the, the designing here of the upper rail. The thumb just kind of fits there on the side. Just feels good in your hands, even though it's a big hunk of metal. Moving on down, you do get an ambi uh, bolt here. Now you're going, well, that's kind of okay, an airsoft, whatever. It's just an ambi bolt for an AK. Most AKs don't have them, only the really tactical ones do. Uh, the reason I like this is you can use it to get your hop up. You can kind of check it that way if you need to, but Here's where G&G has done some things that I'm so happy about that I mentioned earlier, and it's this. So the fire selector, this, I wish every AK on the planet came with one of these. And I know some AK purists to be like, oh, Jonathan, they don't come that way. You have to mod them that way. I, I think this is great. They have two features built into this fire selector. One, take it on down, pull this bolt back, and you can lock it into place. It holds this back because there's a notch cut in it. It's just mechanical, it's nothing fancy. They just cut a notch in the fire selector, but it's enough to hold this back. So now I can go, oh, I can adjust my hop up, no problem, without having to finagle and hold and twist and turn and try to shoot with one hand. Uh, super great touch when dialing this thing in. The second reason is, thing they've done, is they've added a little notch here, but that means I can now do a fire selector with my finger. I don't have to take my hand off. I don't have to do the old Russian under and over thing. I can just reach up, boom, semi-auto. I can push it back up into full auto, all right there. Never have to take my hand off. I mean, that is another great touch. Those two things alone had me sold on this AK, especially when you're moving tight corners, you play in a field that allow you to go full auto to semi-auto and you want to engage at distance or up close and not overshoot somebody. Fantastic touch. But enough fanboying about the fire selector. We're gonna move on down. You get a nice comfortable grip here. It is ambi, it's nice groove, so it's easy to hold on to. Again, no, this is not a purist AK. So if you guys are looking for one that will make Mother Russia proud, uh, probably wanna keep rolling on. If you're looking for something cool, tactical, modern, and fully functional, this is it. And of course, that's also noted by the tactical stock here in the back. It's a very familiar kind of Delta style. They do have the G&G signature battery compartment right here, or like I always like to say, place to put your Skittles, close it up. Uh, you also have the locking stock. So snaps out, goes into place, and then you can lock it so you don't accidentally bump it or something and put it back into place. I mean, you really gotta kind of give it a good go 
to pop it loose and then you can actually move it simple and then lock it back into place. Rounding out the externals, got a couple things left. I know there's a lot going on here because they put a lot into it. You do get a single point sling attachment here on this side and swivel attachments here in the back. So you get some options. If you want to do like a two point sling, you can always throw a little rig something here with paracord in the front on the key mod rail or get a key mod section. They make a lot of swing, uh, swivel sling attachment points for key mods. So you can pick one of those up super easy or pick a tinny because you got both options. That's what's so cool about this. Then the mag release, okay? Another great thing about this, the mag release is ambi. So you actually have both sides and it's not just that little tab you got to press at the bottom here. It's got a paddle on both. So you can reach up with your middle finger, pop this sucker right off. Never again have to take your hands off the fire control. So you actually keep your hand right there on the trigger. You put your middle finger up, boom, mag change, ready to go. Oh, and mag changes? They put a mag assist in here. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's a little rubber pad in here. If you guys have ever owned an AK, you're like, oh, I'm going to jam a mag in there and I can't get it in. You're like, you jam it up too far and you're trying to get it. You notice I just hit it in the first shot, right? I never get them on first shot. So you can do it again. They put the pad in there so you can get perfect AK mag rel reloads every single time. So again, thank you G&G &G, for adding some great features. And of course, rounding up everything you get in the box, you do get the gun and you also get a mid cap. Now these are the 115 rounders. Earlier on, if you guys watch SHOT Show videos when I was talking about this, I said they were going to do uh, a 30 or 90 round adjustable mid cap. They decided to scrap that idea just because let's face it, who runs 30 round mid caps? I mean, really, I would rather have more rounds for my mid cap to be competitive. Again, mid cap for me is what I normally run. So to hear they're giving a 115 rounder in here is a huge upgrade, in my opinion, from the adjustable one they mentioned at SHOT Show 2016. Moving on to the internals, it's 2016 and it's G&G, &G, which means you get it, that's right, a MOSFET and electronic trigger system, which is a huge game changer when it comes to trigger response, how crisp it is. And if you're using something like this indoor CQB, chances are you're looking at a lower feet per second, like this gun has on it, we'll talk about that in chrono, and zippy semi-auto. You want to get those single shots off. You're usually stuck in semi-auto if you're playing in indoor fields around the country uh, or even outdoor fields these days. I pretty much use semi all the time and it just feels so good. I've used this system in other guns and it's good. I don't know what it is about the RK74 CQB. It just feels really good. It is super responsive, super crisp. It might be where the trigger breaks because it's an AK system, a little different than the ones they've been dropping into their actual uh, M4s, which are version two. Just something about it, it just, it's so good. It feels like you have $150 MOSFET in this gun with like an electronic trigger system, a huge upgrade, but it all comes included in the price. I mean, absolutely fantastic. And of course you have all the reinforced GNG upgrades, slide type hop up. Again, like I said, you can access that by locking this panel back uh, and you can dial this thing in. And for such a short gun, I was laser beaming people on the battlefield indoors. Take to the chrono, saw some great numbers, around 360 feet per second with a 0 0.20 gram BB. And I was using the new G&G &G Red Lipos. They are a little snug to get in here. If you get really creative and get one down in the front when you lift this thing up and get in there, you can get them in here, actually. I'd probably recommend a 7.4 because the rate of fire on 11.1 is like 23 rounds a second, which is great. But this gun at that FPS with this great trigger in here really can run a 7.4 just so smoothly. So you do have options. You want to have that high rate of fire, you can throw an 11.1 in. If you want something that's still really good and not have to like go overboard with the voltage on the battery, 7.4 works so good too. So you do have both options and a great FPS to match. So guys, you've been looking for something that will go from CQB to outdoor. I mean, I was seriously getting some great range indoor low light with a red dot on this thing. I was still hitting targets with semi-auto like one or two shots from all the way across the map. Definitely take a look at G&G's new RK74 CQB. And of course, if you guys want to learn more, as always, I'll have a link in the description below so you can check it out. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're not currently a subscriber, click on the logo in the bottom right or in the description and you'll always be in the know. Plus, if you like what you saw in this video and want to learn more, I've got a link down there as well. And if you haven't had your airsoft fix just yet, click in the videos on the right or use the info button at the top of the screen for more. And as the saying goes, everyone has an opinion and I do want to hear yours. So give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video, comment and share.